Hello my soccer universe for another chat with a fellow collector but this time it's a repeat we are again uh, I'm again talking with Idris from Amour du Mayo uh, it is just so natural uh, because not only was our chat when we did it a little bit cut short and it felt we could have continued we are anyway talking privately so much with each other that it was just meant to be uh, meanwhile also my internet connection got better meaning it is faster unfortunately not more stable which you will see in the upcoming uh, video but that was another um, kind of step yeah let's try and do one again and uh, this time we try to make it a little bit more structured before I tell you a little bit more about the topics don't want to make this intro too long because we, uh, it's a two-hour chat that you again will get on the bridge so uh, just full on if you're not familiar with Idris and his channel Amour du Mayo uh, he's a French collector he's an awesome collection a pretty nice YouTube, YouTube channel uh, where he's unpacking he makes some interesting videos uh, the only caveat it's in French but I honestly think if you have some knowledge of French uh, you can follow it because he speaks very uh, clearly and sex sex language if you want to see some nice shirts it's always worth watching so uh, regardless of uh, the language but you can also follow him on Instagram and on Twitter and I link you below uh, he also has been featured now quite often in my videos uh, because he sent me a few shirts that were you know where he helped me get some nice shirts you saw all of them uh, on my channel uh, he also gets hand sent me twice gifts and, and so, so the need is ever we have a very strong connection and yeah this time around we decided instead of um, starting with a topic and then going all around the different tangents I said now nah, let's focus on something and since we are still in the international break we shot the, the video the day after Italy uh, failed to qualify for the World Cup so uh, that just as, as a reference, but um, since we are talking uh, a Kirk and the national team mode, I said, okay, let's focus our um, chat on national teams and let's talk about templates. What are our favorite templates from different suppliers? So we were discussing this a little bit back, back and forth, the uh, pros and the cons. Um, then I had the question, of course, um, that's then the second part, which national team is in a desperate need of having a rebrand meaning uh changing the shirts maybe even change changing the logo and then i go on a quick diatribe why uh why i hate the soccer ball in a logo uh just uh explaining that a little bit so yeah as i said it's a little bit more structured uh the template discussion i think is really really interesting uh this time around we also have it that you will see uh shorts that we are talking about uh or your templates i always try because i had the, all the national teams next text to me i try to pull them so that it's kind of clear for the view of what we are talking about as well so without further ado the intro is getting already almost too long here is our chat i I would say uh, I would say we'll start at either. So I want to talk a little bit about templates because you know when I started watching uh, World Cups and Euros, mm -hmm. what stood out for me is that there was always a common thread among teams from the same manufacturer, and for me it became very clear with Adidas in '92 when they had the um, equipment with the three stripes over and like what France had with the three here. Then uh, in 94, they had something, uh, I think the German uh, design yeah. and then the others, 96, the big uh, swooping uh, yeah. stuff. And then I think in, in 98, this template here with the three stripes on the sides under the arms. Exactly. And so for me, this is always the one thing. I, I, and, and, and I want to start Adidas. I have been thinking, I mean, my favorite probably of all these that I've mentioned, uh, when I go through, the one that I like most is the one from Euro 96, which I don't have a shirt <laughs> yet. I, I only have the France player issue away shirt from that, uh, from the that, 96. That Euros. is one of my, yeah. So without, without. That the, is one of my two favorites without, there. Without the FFF logo and long sleeve. I didn't pay much for this shirt, actually was only 50, I think. Um, but mm -hmm. 
Uh, when it comes to template, the article that you sent me uh, yesterday is quite interesting because templates have always existed. If you even roll back to um, nine, uh, 78 in Argentina, uh, all Adidas teams were wearing the same shirts, actually. Uh, it just became mm -hmm. a debate recently because you had, there was actually something counterbalancing with small brands being more original and putting out designs that were uh, well worked and uh, more flashy, more colorful. And at that moment, when these uh, counterparty arrived, people start, started thinking, oh, that's true. All the other teams from big manufacturers wear the same shirt. And it became a debate at that point. Uh, what's funny with templates is that you, you talked about 92. It's, it's striking because I think the French shirt is disgusting. But the German shirt is really nice uh, because the template is yes. better done. You know what I mean? Um, and in yep. 1994, there were, you know, the use of diamonds, which was different from one team to another. For instance, if you take the Norway away shirt from 94 with the diamonds, the color was much nicer than the France shirt from that era. And it, it, it made or break the, 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 it made or broke the shirt, sorry. So my personal, my favorite Adidas template uh, was, was a hard one to decide. I picked a few shirts with me just to show you. Uh, I'm more into recent designs because for me, uh, because I'm not really a That's hipster. Fine. I'm, I'm not a hipster as a collector. And uh, I, I'm often more into recent designs, even though there are a few shirts that I like. For instance, I have the Norway and Sweden shirt from 1994 with the three big stripes uh, on the on the flanks, it was a nice design, but I think a shirt to be qualitative has to age well, and uh, it was a problem with uh, I think it was a problem with the nineteen the nineties templates uh, overall is that they didn't age very well. So now you have to be a hipster and wear uh, a, yes. a, a football kit as some fashion article you know to make it look cool but otherwise it's not really something that you can wear casually um, and so for me to to answer the question for adidas i was really hesitant um so i didn't bring the 94 because the 94 germany shirt because you have it but yeah i took this one you know to prove a point and i took this one so these are two player issue kits for mm -hmm. me adidas was very good in 2000 in 2012 2014 and 2016 in terms of templates because they had versatile templates that yeah. looked cool that could be either flashy or funky or simple mm -hmm. if you take this one for instance i mean spain had the same with the the, the diagonal stripes um it's super classy the color is really yeah you have it yeah it's super classy. Uh, everything looks. I have fine. it prepared. Yeah, the, the 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 details are really nice. Um, what mm -hmm. would make me think that it's perhaps not the best? It because it looks a bit too sporty in a way. Um, but they were yeah. they were reaching something really nice in terms of compromise between classy and athletic. Then came. So 2014, we had that debate already. I love that shirt, really. What I liked yeah. with the design, I think it's a bit cooler than the 2012 template because of this, you know, which makes it a bit more, a bit smarter, you know, yeah. the, 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 the thing, mm -hmm. thing here. And it was very versatile too. I like the fact that um, it allowed for creativity while being simple. Um, but I think we shouldn't go wrong on the debate, you know, and redistinguish templates and what Adidas made of the template. Yes. Because if you take this no, shirt totally. or the Germany shirt, they're pretty much the same, except for the color. Um, yeah. The template is the same. The lines are the same. And after that, it's what they came up with. And so in that mm -hmm. sense, I, I, I think aesthetically speaking, I prefer the 2014 range. So with uh, Sweden, uh, Argentina, mm -hmm. Germany, not Mexico, but that's that's a, a matter of creativity. Yeah, 
exactly this shirt. If I can find the AD0 version of this shirt, I'll be, I'll be super glad. Uh, but yes. if, if you stick with the concept of template, I would say 2016 was better because the, 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 um, the stripes are here. And so side stripes. And, yeah. and the side stripes uh, looked classier, in my opinion. And though they were mm -hmm. much simple, um, it was not in terms of just lines, it was not uh, simple, uh, it was as simple as this one. It's just that Adidas in 2016 decided to stay really sober in terms of designs. That's another debate. And I liked- Yes, the, totally agree, totally agree. I liked the 2016 template because if they had decided to be as creative as in 2014, the shirts would have been better. Um, so yeah. to answer the question, I think 2016 was, was the best year for Adidas because it combined everything in terms of template. What I enjoyed in 2016 is that the three stripes were for once on the sides, which opened up the whole exactly. shirt a whole lot more, uh, which I thought, thought was such a smart move. It looked lighter, really lighter in terms of design. Oh, they, they did fail a few shirts. We'll talk about that later because it would be a perfect transition. But overall, the template mm. allowed for more, more stuff and in the 90s, they tried to do something else with the stripes, you know, on the shoulders, on the, on the, on the sides. Uh, they tried something with yep. um, diamonds. In 1998, they tried something with your three big stripes, you know, as you are wearing now. Exactly. Uh, but they really hit the spot in 2016 by just putting what they put on the, on the sleeves back on the, on the, on the sides. Yeah. For me, a big thing, going back to the 90s, I told they agree that those most of those shirts, I think up until 98, definitely look dated for the 90s. I would definitely subscribe to that. Um, what for me was always the big uh, allure when you come up to work up is where will the three stripes show up this time? How will Adidas do? This was for the entire 90s. This was kind of ahead of every tournament. This was a discussion among my friends. How are they going to incorporate the, uh, the three stripes? And I think the smartest thing was the 98 Germany home shirt where they just put the three straps across the chest, mm -hmm. which I absolutely loved. Unfortunately, they had to ruin it with, uh, with the way that the collar was done. But yeah. other than that, I, I think it's one of the best German, German shirts that has ever been made, in my yeah. personal opinion. But, uh, it was really nice, but they kept the stripes on the, on the, on the sleeves too, right? Yes, that's a bit too much then. Yeah. Um, that's but, a bit too much. I even yeah. think for this one here, as much as I like it, and I think here is the three stripes on the arms is not so bad because you have the Argentina flag. So here I'm okay with the three stripes here, but I would say in uh, normal, like for what Romania had, they had it just uh, like uh, with red, I think, yellow and red, and then yeah. they had the blue stripes, three stripes here, was probably a little bit too much. Uh, Yugoslavia had had it similarly. True, yeah. Yugoslavia was more sober because only two colors, navy and white. But it, I, I totally see your point. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I want to really emphasize on the fact that we are talking about what I consider the best template, but it's not my favorite. My, my, favorite yeah, yeah. Is, my favorite is actually this one. This is why I put this one, because I mm -hmm. have fond memories of it. So it's the weirdest yeah, yeah. looking template from Adidas, but at the same time, it's my favorite because it, it, it hasn't aged very well, honestly. Uh, but I like the smoothness of the lines. You know, everything is round shaped. Um, and I don't know, I bought the shirt when I was a kid, the replica, and then I traded it for a player issue. But um, so many memories, yeah. Ribéry uh, playing his first World Cup. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know, Zidane, they had both the final uh, it was the very first World Cup that I was really, really. I, I watched every match that was broadcast on on uh, on free TV. So yeah, my mm -hmm. favorite, but not the best. Yeah, no, I I'm, I mean when I go favorite for, for me, it's probably the '96 one. Um, mm -hmm. What I I mean I totally agree with you. The the dynamic lines are really really nice. Um, I never liked of that template the color because it's just plain weird. And then no, I know you this overemphasis, 
Yeah, and the overemphasis on all these levers. And I'm, I'm actually fine with the ones on the side. The one under the collar is one that bothers me, for instance, a lot. And him here, that yeah. is one that I would have gotten rid of. And I think if this is in the same color, like the Milan away shirt that they won the Champions League in, is a perfect too. example. Yeah. Or Chelsea home, exactly. Those two are perfect examples of wonderful shirts uh, made with that template. Yeah, it's they look true. absolutely gorgeous. True, yeah, true, true. <laughs> so. I, for, funny fact, I, I think I told you already, but the very first time I, uh, well, discovered you was not on YouTube, but it was on your blog. I was you now browsing yeah. Google, uh, 2006 mm -hmm. stuff, and I came across your blog on the 2006 and uh, on why you didn't like the 2006 shirts. And only a few months later, uh, or a year later, maybe, as I started, you know, watching YouTube videos on that, I came across your channel and yeah. you talk about that and it, it, it sounded familiar and I was like, I, 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 <laughs> that opinion sounds familiar. <laughs> and so everything, you know, connected afterwards, <laughs> it was really funny. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, um, but I, I actually want to add another Adidas template. Uh, it's a little bit cheating, but I want to show you a shirt it's actually the 2015 one. Oh man. Is which it, is oh. right in between. It's the Argentina way. I actually like it better with this net that they had these dots here, like for Wales and for Northern Ireland. Looks I remember. Even better, but yeah. I actually, I, I do, I have quite a few shirts. I have a Milan shirt and a Valencia shirt. I have a Bayern shirt. I have this shirt. This temple is actually quite yes. nice overall. Uh, I, I totally agree. I have it. I have the Valencia one, uh, the player issue. Mm -hmm. I remember that I, I still want to buy uh, that Waves shirt because it was green and red. Yes. And it, looked really, uh, it looks amazing. That's, that's the one I want. That's the it one I really want. It's really rare. It's really rare. Much more rare than the one they, they, they used in the, in the Euros, actually. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But here, with that example, with Argentina, really didn't use it properly because it looks like a training shirt uh, uh, or a pre match shirt. Uh, they could have done much better. That's for me, they got the colors wrong. For me, they got the colors yeah. wrong. Uh, not, not, enough, not enough color. Yeah, exactly. That's what uh, it could. If they use this on the sleeves at least, yeah. and maybe make an Argentina, they can use uh, the sleeve cuffs. That color as the main body, I think, is a much better shirt. Yeah, true. Exactly. I totally agree. But the corresponding home shirt is probably my favorite Argentina shirt because it's just light blue and white. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> but, um, same. I have the same opinion. It's too simple. It's, it's, it really is a lazy design. Yeah, but I actually enjoyed the simplicity for once because I got a little bit tired for Adidas putting always some black accents everywhere. I liked it for exactly that simplicity. Maybe a little bit less Adidas accents would have made it better. Uh, you know, the more straightforward, the better in, in yeah. some cases. I so know, I, I maybe there were too many lines. There were too many lines pro, 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 probably on there. But I, at that point, I got really tired that every Argentina shirt had to have the black stripes up there, which matches up nicely with the pants. But I found it rather boring and I needed something fresh in a way or... So, yeah. the, uh, there is a, an Argentina shirt that I like is the one they had in don't get me wrong I think it was the one just after 2010 with a color yeah yeah it was amazing and I think the stripes were white uh, and in and the, yeah. the tech fit version was just sublime uh, and the away jersey was the last one with this color and yeah and, with and the, the Argentina flag. It, this one looked amazing. The, this, the combo was amazing. Uh, unfortunately, was I regret so much. I was actually at that point, I was about to buy this one. And then I think I decided on the long sleeve Milan shirt, which is also super nice. But I basically had to make this decision that I do a little bit regret of not going for that Argentina shirt. Because yeah. now it's, it's a unicorn almost around here. Yes, true. Uh, or on eBay, you can find it for 300 and, uh Yeah, exactly. It's not interesting no. for that price. <laughs> exactly, but someday perhaps, yeah. And I, I, th I, I missed out on the, the, the player issue too. Uh, and it was the first time that they introduced the, the, res the um, resistance uh, band, you know, the, the grip at the yeah. bottom mm -hmm. shirt for player issues. 
So it was quite, yeah, it was quite rare. And I remember around the, the badge, there was a bit of design, like a, a, a sun or something yeah. like that. It really looked nice, really. It was, and it was a shirt that deserved the World Cup uh, featuring. Uh, and it was only used in a, in a Copa America, or was it even used in a- Yeah, in the, home, in the home Copa America, yeah. where they got then also by Uruguay in the um, quarterfinals on penalties. Yes, I remember that. But yeah, the, the shirt was amazing. I think it, I, it's definitely one of the best Argentina shirts of the last 20 years. Yeah. I would agree, totally agree with that. I actually would even say that the Argentina shirts released in between the World Cups are usually better than the ones at the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, I think my, I, I'm just trying to, uh, there was one, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think, I think the last one that I really liked at a World Cup themselves was the 98th one, the home oh. shirt. For me, it was 2014. It was really nice. It was most nice, but I think I like the 2008 better because it has the bold color. I mean, not the, the 2014 has really nice lines. I, it's a very uh, sportish. I always liked it. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I think I liked the 98 one uh, even a bit better. But okay. that's you know personal choice, and yeah. you know, uh, in what 2006 was for you was 98 for me. Yeah, I understand. Either, so, either way, uh, the final. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but different outcomes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a trauma. You may you may win. After that, you may win another World Cup. It's a trauma that will never disappear. You know, France losing the 2006 final and losing this way. Uh, it's something that will never, never, never ever disappear. That's something. Yeah, I, that's, I, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that, that's definitely different, uh, a different story. But yeah. Uh, so I think we have kind of some common ground for Adidas, or? But yeah, and it's the perfect transition because I thought a lot about Nike templates, and and honestly, I I had to come up with the same uh, idea that the 2006 uh, 2016 Nike template was the best, uh, but it was a whole lot of self debate because Nike is a bit different as for me. They did not come up with a template at every competition. I think we cannot really consider 98 no. and 2000 being templatey for Nike because in 2000, the shirts were so simple that they were not even templates. Um, 98, 98, a teeny bit more, but yeah. I agree with you. It's really hard. They, they, they had a similar cut, but they, uh, they were... Um, they were not there. They were not identifiable templates. I think the first one was 2002, where I would say, yes, this is now 2004, not 2006. Four, not yeah, 2006. Yeah, the I mean, there is a certain cut that I find that I found twice. I have this Australia shirt here, yeah, it's from 2006, and I have a Barcelona shirt with the exact same. Oh, yeah. The, the orange Barcelona shirt, yeah. Exactly, it's the exact same. So, I mean, there are, but I totally agree. 2006 is, um, I would say, is a borderline case for me, for Nike. It's more like that, um, I think it's more like that the, how the shirt was constructed, but it's not like the collar and the sleeve cuffs were so, they were always different. Yeah, and if you really, if you take all the, the, the teams at that World Cup, Brazil, uh, yeah. South, South Korea, Mexico, uh, the United States none have the same lines, so no, absolutely, yeah, Port yeah. Portugal. So really, for no. me, 2006 is not a template year either. Um, 2008 either. 2010 there were similarities, but not really identified. Yes, the, I call them the I call them the band aid shirts yeah. because everything looked <laughs> like a band aid. True. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, th these are just features that you could find either like this or like that, but not really mm -hmm. identifiable template. But anyway, I wouldn't have picked them as my favorite as the best templates. And after that came 2012, which was not really templatey. They had the same technologies, but not no no templates. 2014 even less because Netherlands, France, um, Brazil again, none had the same template. Uh, yeah, but I see the, the main difference was, I think, for Brazil, they had the raglan cut, 
Yeah. That was very similar. Uh, when I compare my Turkish shirt and the Netherlands shirts, I find something similar. They had the thicker sleeve cuffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, but when you think about that, it's not really something. So it that... barely it. I'm. Oops. <laughs> no, there. There's my bottle. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's going to. I think it's going to fall once or twice during the video. <laughs> yeah. No worries. So it's okay. On. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so I think this, so for me, 2014 is a borderline of, of course, the Kiev one is 2016, where it breaks, where there was a real template there again. More than ever, more than ever. And it was boring as hell. But at the same time, as it is pointed out in your video, if they had picked the right colors, color combinations, it would have looked pretty much, it would have had the same effect as 2000. Um, in in I mean in a modern way, but uh, I I can totally see your point. The one thing I do not like about this template, let me see. I do have the Portugal shirt here. Where is it hanging? Portugal. I'm sorry, I don't wanna re-traumatize you. <laughs> yeah. Um. I do agree largely, but the one thing that I always was unhappy was this line here. Mm -hmm. It kind of, um, here on the back, I'm all fine with it. Kind of have, have it more defined, but um, it kind of made the shoulder, the raglan, a little bit of an afterthought to me. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's two different front and back. That is what always bothered, what, what, what bothered me a little bit with that. Uh, but I don't think it is better if you cut it through, like in the 22, uh, 22 now, the I think they cut it through under the collar. It yes, doesn't look I much saw. better either. So, no, it doesn't, look, it doesn't look right. Halfway would be better, you know, something, yeah. something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I do totally like the, I, I do like the side striping. That is something that I find really cool. But the one thing that this template did. Same thing as yes. It? Side strapping is nice. But the one thing that this template did, uh, and I see this is kind of, I see this as a bib. Here, all the information about any team is carried. Like for Barcelona, it was the stripes here for uh, whatever design element was just put on this panel here. Sometimes on the back, but on the back was mostly kept plain to house the number. Mm -hmm. So this became like the standard that we see now ev everywhere that uh, the design element of the shirt is only housed here. And for that, I don't like this template. <laughs> Most. What is really interesting with 2016 is that the second mm -hmm. tier teams, national teams of Nike had more personal. They got shirt. better ones. Yeah. It's, it's impressive. They got the better ones. Croatia kit was uh, wonderful. This is the Croatia kit I wanna have. I love this Croatia kit, and I cannot uh, find it anywhere. I have it in Player Issue, uh, and it was not commercialized wow. in Player Issue. And I found it. Yeah. I don't know, out of nowhere, on Vinted, in the early my early years uh, on Vinted, some guy had just a whole bunch of Player Issue shirts, and he sold them. It was like, yeah, uh, here's all all that I have. If you want anything, he had Slovenia. Uh, uh, it was amazing. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough money, but otherwise I would have bought Slovenia definitely because it looked really nice mm -hmm. too. Um, I remember Poland had a, a nice shirt as well. Um, yes, with the graphic coming. And and in 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 terms of clubs, you had Roma, um, Monaco had had that uh, secondary template. Um, of course, here I'm I'm judging the player issue one because I think there's a lot of difference between player yep. issue and replica, uh, unlike the Adidas template uh, for which yes. both, both versions are, are, are mm -hmm. pretty much the same. But it was really nice because um, it brought it could it could have been used better, of course. But if you it's just if you compare it with all the templates that we have quoted, it's the mm -hmm. one that is that can aged the better in my opinion there could be 2018 too because there were templates i just want to say i think for me 2018 uh, is just a smidgen better because it did every all the criticism that were wrong about 2016 i think they improved in 2018 with the only exceptions i think they got rid of the side strapping yes they did 
and they made sometimes a very weird color. France had a weird color, yeah. Now, uh, France is egg, 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 actually, I think about Portugal, where you, it looks like it's a short color, but it, it's not really oh, because yeah. the, mm -hmm. the beep I, is kind of. Yeah, but I like it, but I, I agree. It looks, it looks a bit like a, an arrow. Uh, yeah. But so yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I'm really hesitating. 2018 or 2016. You're, you're right. I think 2000, I think 2018 was a bit better again because the the replicas and the, the replica and the player issue version were a bit more similar. 2016, they yes. were they were too, too, they were really split apart um, yep. in terms of look. Um, yeah, and I, I think that, that in it. And in addition, uh, not only Temple, but I think also the shirts then looked better overall. I mean, yes, they had, uh, although I think for France it worked well, this weird uh, graphic mm -hmm. on the shoulders that I think China mm -hmm. had, I mean, every, 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 everyone had, which was kind of a little bit weird looking, but I think I could live with that. <laughs> and what, what was funny was that you had, a, it was for France, the reverse effect of the 2016 shirt, you know, Light blue, navy, you know. The yeah. So yeah. I always was wondering. I was always wondering in for, for France if it wouldn't look better reverse, but I always come 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 to the conclusion that the version that they wore is the better one. The version that they wore. Now, if you would have not the navy, uh, they wore navy with the uh, light blue on the shoulders. Uh huh. And I was always wonder how would it look with the blue and then the dark shoulders. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it would look cool because what is better with the 2018 template compared to the 2016 is that the transition is more fluid because yep. of the thin stripes and it's it's a fade in. It's it's it, it, this fading exactly. effect is, is much better than 2016 was cut and that was it. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think I yeah I think I'm going to change my mind and then say 2018 uh, for Nike because 2002, yeah. uh, no 2002 2004 are great in terms of memories and because it brings us back uh, to work to the football that we liked and everything. But aesthetically speaking, they were not they were not that nice. You know, it was it was a bit like uh, they, they they were the to weirdest, be honest the weirdest of shapes. Yeah, yeah, but I have a sort of a love for the 2004 one. Yeah, it was, it was really and, great, but... I mean, it has this, uh, because it looked like a cr um, gigantic crest and then the circuit numbers on the front, there was something really nice about it. And I even think that the Team Guys template for Adidas is, came because of that, Ooh. because it's very similar. It's true, I've never, I had never noticed, but it's true. It just came to me. I think that, I mean, this is very, very similar. Yeah. You have here the lines, coming over as something yeah <laughs> yeah plus they and you're right you i think you're right because in the on the player version nike in mm -hmm. 2004 were the first to come up with heat sealed bondings and yeah in 2006 adidas did exactly the same mm -hmm. for the first time so i think they've taken inspiration i had never noticed but you're right with just a little, the Nike version looks futuristic. This one looked a bit more retro, yes. but otherwise it's yeah. Uh... Well, what I like about the team, the team guys is the slight pinstriping going in. I mean, if yeah. you look at it, the short it really material. Nice. This is something like that that's really nice, and I liked always the. I don't want to discuss the numbering styles now, but I always like the numbering style. It, it has a certain futuristic retro feel, if exactly. that makes any sense. I remember when I saw the ads. Not the, I'm not talking about the TV ad, which is just iconic. Uh, the, 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 do you remember this one? I'm not sure if I with do the remember two, that. The two people. little uh, Spanish guys picking up teams with legends, player, legendary. Yeah, 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 got it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's my favorite football ad ever. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just so cool. Um, and I remember when I saw the, the photo ad uh, late 2005, the first pictures of the shirts before the November friendlies. I was just like, oh my God, it looks totally different than what we are used to. Uh, and the numbers look so cool. And yeah. it gives a, uh, yeah, a retro futuristic style. I, 
I love that. I really love it. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, in French. We call it Madeleine de Proust. Do you know what a Madeleine is? It's a small cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Proust, That's obviously, you, you know Proust uh, because in his books, Marcel Proust uh, talks about his mother's Madeleine, and it, it brings okay. him back to his childhood. Okay, you got know, it. The smell and everything. So yeah, got French, it. Uh -huh. We we. It, it, it has become an, an id, uh, idiomatic phrase. Uh, la Madeleine de Proust, when something brings you mm -hmm. back to your childhood uh, in, a yes. sweet, in a sweet sense, you know, not bad memories, mm -hmm. but just Absolutely. good memories from your childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so no, no, me, I mean, there was definitely, some, there's definitely something to that. I mean, I remember the first time I really saw it is because I got tickets for the World Cup. Yeah. We were actively looking into... And then uh, we need to get shirts because we got for Spain. And then I never liked the template that we use for Spain, home or even Argentina, because that just is plain weird to me with the yeah. uh, stuff. And that's why I then went for the away shirt, which I actually thought, yeah, um, this is actually nicely done because there's kind of the flag in there. <laughs> but I, I do remember that very distinctively. But yeah, um, to me, uh, again, when I look at it now, there are just some things that just bought me <laughs> with it, but I do agree. When it came out, I, I there was some love for it, and it just I think it had it like the '90s template to me. It has not aged well. That's the only thing. But let's go back to Nike. <laughs> so yeah, Nike. If you compare 2018 to the other real uh, distinguishable templates that we uh, listed, yeah. and there there are not many actually. Uh, no. 2018 is the best looking in my opinion and once again the, yep, most, the most versatile yes and i it, exactly and i think that they they, are, they went then two years later almost a step too far in every account introducing also weird colors like the one that is like croatia has which i i, I cannot i cannot oh, yeah. stand simply yeah i think this korea shirt the Korea shirt here has it too, but it looks here it looks fine because it's not so obvious. The, yeah, the squared so, one and then it's round. The, the the thing is in two thousand in twenty twenty, I think that you can't call them templates anymore, just like two thousand six, two thousand eight. Like yeah. there are similarities, but they are not proper templates. Um, the French yeah. shirt you can't call it a template. I love it. I mean, they claimed in yeah, um, although they made it into a template. Granada, Austria, Vienna, and a few others were wearing exactly that shirt. True. <laughs> True. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah, now I think there are certain, I mean, there, um, what they did back uh, then is that they said, okay, we have certain features that we can combine. We have different color styles, we have different cuts, we have different sides. Like the French home has the straight, uh, or both yes. French shirts have the straight side stripes. Uh, the Dutch have and the uh, the Croats had the weird ones that are cutting, mm -hmm. uh, which I never get why we ever needed to do that. But okay, <laughs> I think this was uh, Nike was entering there at a very experimental phase, phase again. But I I think we agree on the template. But I have to say, when I liked Nike best was actually just up until 2014, and that sweet spot between 2012 and 2014. Is when I think Nike, yeah. especially then to 2014, there they hit a, 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 a high wall bottom because every shirt looked classy, true, absolutely true. gorgeous. Exactly, I, I I totally agree. 2014 is really nice. Uh, the first time that I saw the the French shirt, it was released. I I, I can see myself in my room in Lille when I was a student. Uh, mm -hmm. on Facebook, I saw the pictures. It was the more my it was my birthday, and uh, the day of France versus Ukraine, uh, the second leg. Yes, we were exactly. pretty sure that we would not make it to the World Cup, and they released the shirt in the morning, or it leaked in the morning, and we and I was like, what a waste! Not going to the World Cup with such a wonderful kit, which for me, it had the same effect as the, as the 2006 kit, like. Oh my God, it's totally different from what we're used to. And it just looks amazing with the old crest back. Um, and we won actually, and it was made official after the game. And I totally remember that it's, and we are going to talk about rebranding later, but 
I, I, totally yeah. re- I totally remember, okay, there is something new going on because it was, in, I, I don't know what, from abroad, what you know about this patch, but in France, and Didier Deschamps himself says that today's team was born on November the 19th, 2013, uh, with that yeah, game. I, uh, and, and, and I do remember that game. I do remember that game actually quite well. Um, I remember it also because despite me always having sympathies for France, I was pretty sick and tired of the French national team at that point. Yeah. That I actually was even ready to, similar to what I, I was ready. Okay, okay, we have a World, a World Cup without France, so be it. I'm fine with that. I would actually love for Ukraine to finally do something on the World Cup again. And I remember they released on that shirt and I said, this is the perfect France look. Finally, Nike got it right. Finally, Nike got got right. I had a, a blue, white, red. I was so, ah, <laughs> and yeah. that I didn't get this shirt is to me still one of those. Uh, I do, I mean, we were living in Vienna at the time and during the World Cup, I mean, I bought ahead of the World Cup, I bought Brazil and Argentina because I said, I finally want to have a proper Brazil shirt. Uh, I got an Argentina. And then during the World, the World Cup, I was always torn between, shall I get the Netherlands? Shall I get the French shirt? And at that time, I didn't buy as liberally as I do, do now. And I think my wife and we were kind of very much looking at our money. Yeah. Uh, and I remember my wife saying, you know, if you want to have something, just choose a shirt. And then, okay, the Dutch did a little bit better. And I was more for the Dutch. And I was so happy that this great lion crest is back. Yeah. But I to, to, to this day, uh, I should have gotten the France shirt and I should have gotten the Dutch away jersey back then. Oh, yeah, the, the blue <laughs> one. We talked about that in, in, in our yeah, yeah. first chat. But yeah, the for, and also back in 2014, we didn't have as many secondhand websites as today. So you can't yeah. really be too tough on yourself because I was the same. I was a student, so I really uh, mm-hmm. cared about my money, though I did actually buy this one because I couldn't miss it. Uh, so I, I saved a bit of money and I wanted the player version. Um, and But it's not as easy as now to get a 20 euro shirt um, because now- No, I mean, I went, I I went picked, to the Nike store. Yeah, of course you had to, but I picked mm-hmm. no, this year, in, I mean, in 2021. So just the, a few weeks before the euros, I managed to pick the the France home shirt, the, the one that they are currently wearing. Mm-hmm. Brand new with tags, player version, the authentic player version, so the one you can find in store, you know, not the, the, the kit room one, for on Vinted for just uh, 70 euros, brand new with tags. Yeah. But it's still available for 140. So, but in 2014, it was impossible to do that. So, yeah. of course, no, it was uh, total. So true. I mean, I still remember I got the World Cup winning France shirt ahead of the World Cup. That's I, I remember I went to, to my wife. We, we, we just moved here and, you know, our financial situation was getting better. Uh, no, but not now, but there yet. And I remember going to, to my wife and saying, I want to buy for this World Cup one shirt. And it will be this France shirt. Yeah. And then I find it, I think, for 50 euros, because I said, I'm not going to let another navy blue France shirt pass on me. <laughs> and I remember I bought it ahead of the World Cup for 50 euros. And I still cannot believe that, that I got the, I mean, it's same thing for the Italy shirt that won the, uh, ahead of the World Cup, same for the Italy shirt that won the euros. I mean, we also got this for Christmas for 60 euros. Or I mean, at a much cheaper price than you could get it then a few months later. So yeah. I'm very happy with those buys. And- <laughs> When people ask me, I remember a friend asking me, okay, what's your favorite shirt ever? I, it, it's impossible to, to, to answer, first of all, because the generations have changed. So I think you can pick yeah. a favorite shirt on a decade, but not, not, not uh, ever. But when I'm asked, my favorite France shirt is the 2014 one. It's yeah, just, I think that one is, yeah. It's the, uh, the, the one that you can wear with a pair of jeans and look nice yes. with and it's just absolutely one hundred. Yeah, I all I I I think this is a, this has def, this is definitely a timeless look. It's definitely a timeless look that they manage there. Uh, and there I'm even fine. Although I always say I wanna have a touch of red somewhere on my France jerseys, but with this one I'm fine that it doesn't yeah, have because it, you don't need any anything 
more than that. Yeah, I would it's, agree with it. I would just, agree with it. Yeah, it's just perfect. And so you you talked about the Italy jersey. Let's move on to the Puma templates because oh yeah, <laughs> because because for me, I I really thought about it. it's much easier uh, with Puma to talk about templates because since 1994 or 1996, every two years they've had clear, distinguishable. Um, Templates, templates yeah. until today so it's yes. much easier and there were uh -huh. and, and starting in, in 2010 for the for the first time they did something for europe and for africa um, yeah and so and they had two and they had now that africa and they had the rest of the world because your your uruguay had the same uruguay had the same as the other european teams yeah okay so yeah africa and rest of the world but for me it got to, after all consideration once again perhaps my my the one i have most memory with is the 2006 template because it was really simple but a, a whole lot of personalization in the shirts uh with yeah. the, the, whole will, the, the, the big with motifs that. and flashy colors i love that and we talk about the kids this is a year for which i did have i did pay attention to the kids because the, the puma kits looked really nice you know mm -hmm. the combination the Cameroon for instance uh, and with the, the the socks with the the, the small the, the the design uh yeah I mean 2006 really looked nice but for me the best are uh 2020 really here I have so this one of course uh you have this one too this one is the player issue mm -hmm. version uh and it's a sample so I'm really proud yeah. I have a match one too but this one is the player yeah. issue version, uh, so which was not commercialized. So you see, there is mm -hmm. no authentic number. You know, it's a it's a sample yeah. that uh -huh. was pre-commercialized. I'm I'm going to make a video out of this one anyway. What I like first of all is that it the replica version and the player version look the same. Yeah, and except for the holes. <laughs> except for the holes, but I love the holes. I think it's a really lovely touch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. the, and the, the rubber bands here, I love them because they're mm -hmm. I, I love them. The little flag here, a bit of detail mm -hmm. here, and everything was the same on the replica and the player issue. And though simple, there was a whole lot of personalization. I, I picked this one, but I also have these Morocco. Yeah. So brand new with tags as well. They're playing today. Mm -hmm. So brand new with yes. tags as well. They, no, they are already played one one at the DRC. Okay. I watched. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so. Nice. So player issue version two, this one. Uh here the motifs are on the sleeves. But I like mm -hmm. this one. Not my favorite cut. I prefer this cut, which is similar to Italy's except for the color. I prefer this cut yeah, this with one, the motifs. This one's on the... yes. But this one's too dark to check one. But that's a different story. Yeah, that's it's not template. It's not template related. Yeah, that's yeah. a matter of creativity. Totally, to choice. Totally, but, totally agree. But yeah, I know I what you mean. I know what you mean. Is, this is perfect because for any kind of body shape, it works well. For any kind yeah. of, if you want to add any any type of detail, you can. Uh, the colors, no matter the shape, look really nice. Yep. And mm -hmm. they can be reused for all clubs. Like Marseille had this one. City had this one. It works perfectly, fi perfectly fine. You have a bit of detail on the, 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 the back of the collar. And it looks mm -hmm. smart, really. So, yep. uh, and it's not something that you find often with Puma shirts. You know, the smart. No, you don't find. My only complaint with that one is the same thing. It's basically... The 2016. The front panel is where all the design element is. The back panel is plain. That's my only. That's the only thing I don't like about this one. But I do agree. This is probably overall the best one. Um, I do have a big love for uh, the Africa range in 2010. This is probably yeah, my know. favorite. Uh, there is something about it uh, with the animal. Although I think the customization 2006 was better. That yes. I will always, which I didn't uh, realize at the time, to be honest. Uh, 
I always thought it's so cool. There's the lion for Cameron is up there and then the pharaoh and, and, and so on. Um, I actually think that the one that they had then in 2012 was also not bad. Uh, I ha only have a South Africa one from that. Oh, yeah. We oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, uh, so, quick question. Uh, did you watch, mm -hmm. have you watched my video, the video that I released this morning? No, I have, I have not gotten to it. Because it's I, about the so. 2010, it, it's, a, uh, it's about the 2010 uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire shirt. Uh, uh -huh, yeah. That, that I found as a player issue uh, because there is France mm -hmm. Cote d'Ivoire tonight. So uh, yeah. I, I uh -huh. it. And for France versus South Africa, as I don't have a South Africa shirt, I'm going to release a video on my last, latest Africa picks. Uh, on mm -hmm. Linton, and there is a Senegal 2013 shirt, yeah. and another one that you are going to love, which is from the following range 2014. Not spoiling yeah. anything, but you will. I I think you will love it. But overall, once again, there is too much difference between the player version and the replica version because of the that fits. that may very well be, yeah. That may very, I think uh, from a universal point of view, I think uh, you're told it's you're told right that 2020 is um, the best one. I mean, they didn't have really great templates. I mean, 2008 is probably the one that I would pick next because all the other ones had some quirks. If I think about it, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm just trying to remember what, because uh, in 2014, those were the ultra tight ones where they had these little weird lines on the side, which uh, and then some imprinted stuff, which looked weird. Uh, 2016, I, I think 2016 was not bad either. Yeah, but too much difference between the player version and the and, and the replica. Probably. Again. And, Probably. Uh, yeah. And, and the Africa range in 2014 was different from the the Europe the yeah. rest of the world. Version. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is why. This is also why I love the Puma 2020. There is no difference, uh, so it, yeah. can, it, it can fit any kind of team. Uh, mm -hmm, we yes. saw that at the at, at the, the Afcon, uh, Egypt with uh, the the little Egyptian like motifs, it looked really really nice. And so this is why. Overall, no, and, and, and again the cost and the customization is through the roof. It doesn't always work, but. The way they can customize these front panels uh, is really next level. This is something that I would wish um, more often to see that there's some uh, cultural identity. I mean, it was crafted by culture. There's some craft. There's a cultural identity put onto the shirt. True. Exactly. So this uh, this is this is something, something I have to say. Puma sometimes comes up with these great ideas, like in 2006 with the big um, uh, with the big customization, like the, the Eagle for Poland and Austria, or the Lion for Cameron. For Cameron, then for the Africa range, it was customized for there. For that, I love Puma, but for every good thing that they do, they have an equal crappy or even crappier stuff. Yeah. Uh, so hit the miss with Puma. Uh, Italy. That, yeah. Italy. I think when Puma does it well. Yeah. Italy Go have ahead. had a much much more shit shirts than good shirts with Puma. Yeah, I would Which agree. So. Yeah, I mean, I know we dis. I mean, uh, we disagree probably on the 2012 one. A slight. Yeah. Oh yeah, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to say, when it came out, I didn't. My, I, I, I didn't like it either because I, I didn't like the color. For I mean, I my first look always goes to the neckline, uh, weirdly enough, because it looked weird. But then, um. I got used to it, but um, this graphic on the front, I never quite understood. I think it would be better without that one. Uh, I, I remember my- But then they had the super, they had the super, uh, how, how can I say, Robocop shirt at the, um, at the Confederations Cup a year later, which I think this is the nadir. <laughs> oh yeah, this was, oh my God. It, it, it's, <laughs> yeah. Puma did really weird things. Uh, I remember the first time I saw the Italy 2012 shirt released, I was like, it's like they are tried to iron plastic and everything has melted. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I know I hate it and I still hate it to the bone. 
Plus the font was yeah. looked horrible. No, the font is uh, the, the, the font is completely uh, unacceptable. And <laughs> uh, and this was also the time is also also the time where what what I hated with Puma for and started in 2006 I think when all the names were in lowercase letters on on the back. I yeah. hated this. This was one of the things that uh, should never have been allowed. True, because true. it's not legible at all. And then those weird fonts. I mean, uh, it's always one good and one bad Puma font. Although I think the 2020 one is good. And I saw the leak for the new one, which is also not bad. It's actually quite legible. OK, I haven't <laughs> seen the I haven't seen the leak for now. But... It's more angular. It's more angular, but it looks a little bit like um, it reminds me of the um, a little bit of um, American college style font a little okay. bit. So uh, it's not, a, I, a, 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 at least from first look, I mean, I saw the entire set, it didn't look bad. But for me, it's always, there's a good Puma font, then there's a bad one. There's a good one, there's a bad one. Talking <laughs> about that, uh, in the video that is going to be released on the on my Senegal shirt, uh, because Senegal, in, from 2013 to 2015, used different fonts. I mean, almost for every yeah. game. It, it was amazing. So they had that weird uh italy font you know that looked horrible they yeah. had another one and they had two others and the one that i'm showing you know on the shirt that i picked you know the match one shirt is a font mm -hmm. that i love because it's the font that is used that or that was used by most uh, uh national hockey teams at the international uh, at the at, at the world championship you know it's it's a bit yeah. uh and I, I i'm pretty sure that you know what i'm talking about uh, i like this yeah. font and it's really yep. weird because it was a Puma shirt mm -hmm. with different fonts, a good one, which was only used for this shirt, a bad one, which was used for all shirts. So Uruguay had it, Italy had it. Well, yeah, it's a, uh, it was really weird, a, re a weird font and it really broke the shirt, made it even worse. Uh, while yep. on the one that yep. I'm showing, I'm quite happy that it's, uh, it's really more angular, but it's a, it's a, it's, it's a font that I like because it's a bit more neutral. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I like it on the on the ice hockey Nike Nike shirts. Um, yes, but, but yeah, we've covered. I think in terms of time, you want. I wanna go one. Puma? I wanna say one last thing on Puma. I wanna go a little bit retro. Uh, I I was thinking now. I think the '98 version. I really like the shirts that Austria and Cameroon had back then. They had these side panels here. Oh, the 98? 98. I, I think really this nice. was yeah. one that I did that. And I'm trying to think that um, what, uh, what was 2000 was good or bad. But uh, I think I, there was one Austria uh, There was one Austria shirt in there that I really liked. I think if you take 98, 2000, 2002, when it comes to Puma, the transition was really smooth. Because they looked yeah. a bit like the the, 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 the the shirt before, but with a bit mm -hmm. more, uh, you know, how that, a bit lighter, a lighter design, you know, a clearer design. Yeah. Um, I, I really liked uh, the, the 96 one stands. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 really, I, I, I sorry, I forgot you. I, I didn't really the like 96. the 96. No, but I think it still uh, it still holds up. It has this taping here uh, that is kind of you know it's rather simple, and then it has the shoulder taping. It just has a slight pattern. It's not very nineties, whereas the previous ones were definitely totally nineties. Yeah, exactly. Puma was really big in the early nineties. Caen had a Puma, had Puma shirts as well. Uh, but what I liked that in two thousand in um, nineteen ninety eight, they came up for the first time with the the, the Puma logo without the letters. And yeah. we talked about that already, but yeah, yeah. it became I, it, it, it became much more modern uh, in, in in the style. Bulgaria had that. Shirt I can as well. see that. Yeah, I mean, I I still have, a, but this is like you with the team guys. I still have a love for what they came out in '95 with the very bold shoulders, if done right. I mean, Bulgaria did it really nicely and. Parma is this is my favorite Parma shirt with the um, white shirt and then the yellow and the blue weird pattern on there. Austria did it completely wrong. I always say Austria did it just in black and white. And I always said if they make the shoulders red, white, this would have been an absolute gorgeous, an absolute crazy look that I would have loved to see. 
No, they didn't. <laughs> it, it's funny because you always seem so disappointed about Austria. Whenever we talk about Austria, there is something that you're disappointed about. <laughs> I mean, there's not much to be happy about. <laughs> No, uh, I have to say that um, when I say Austria, I mean Austrian Puma. This is a is, if not the, it's one of the longest standing partnerships. It is. I think Austria has overall been relatively well served with Puma. There are definitely some classics uh, there that I absolutely love, but they but they went through all the phases uh, there True. in many ways. So uh, it is it is hit and miss, but I think that I I cannot imagine Austria without Puma. I even remember that I was when Lusk in '99 became supplied by Puma after switching over from Reebok. I, I was sad to see Reebok go, but then they had Puma, and I took this as kind of as a, a sign of pride. We were the Puma team. Nah, not true. Sturm Graz also had had a Puma, but it was kind of we have now a real man manufacturer. Yeah. After we had like for one and a half years Adidas in '94, um, but you know, with all financial troubles, Adidas quickly made a disappearing act. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember uh, this was a sign of pride, and then we got relegated. We had one season really nice Puma shirt, a black one with uh, a white pinstripes, which was not available to buy at the time. And then suddenly we are turning up, we are changing many manufacturers every year. But that Puma peer peer, this was such a, a point of pride for me because I actually liked what they were doing, uh, yeah, I, even though it was not all. Uh, so at that time, and it was not the templates, uh, what last game was not the template that the national teams had. It was more like what Lazio got around that time, who were also with Puma. So, yeah. I, it, I, I, I so I will always have a soft spot for Puma. I, I, I can understand, uh, and I've seen your videos on the last shirts, uh, all, all the videos, uh, they, do, they did look nice, you know, and what I liked is that uh, in terms of fabric, the shirts were the same in store and what the players wore, but yeah. the, to mm -hmm. distinguish the player versions were because they had sponsors that you couldn't buy and it makes it a bit more, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I just like that. Uh, it was a bit the same for yes. La Last can Khan have a lot in, in common. Uh, yeah, yeah, smaller teams. <laughs> yeah, smaller teams, same manufacturers, same uh, shirt conceptions, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, but mm -hmm. I and as for Austria, of course, I couldn't imagine uh, Austria without Puma either, because they, they they have been they they've had the I mean since manufacturer logo uh, appeared on the shirts, Austria have always had Puma, and I think they are the only team in the world that is in this situation national team in the world is uh, in this situation so um it's yeah. uh, it, because yeah. i made a bit of research du during the euros i made a video about that you know the longest partnerships of the euros and so of course austria won uh, because most people tend to think that it's adidas and uh, and germany but because of the erima uh break exactly it's not it's not it's, it's actually puma and austria so it's a bit of a it's the most classic partnership ever in sport uh, so yeah. Of course, you've been through all the phases, but if you go back to 98, yeah, I think 98, 2000, and 2002 was a really nice phase, honestly. I hated the 2004 yeah, yeah. version the, with the that weird yeah. stuff. I think the 2002 was for me already with the, uh, the patches a little bit below that went uh, almost a little bit in the weird direction already, but I agree with you. The ones before, I think, were quite, quite nice. Yeah, but what I like with the 2002 uh, it, it's what, it is the same same argument as with this one. It, it, the round shapes yeah, yeah. Look, look nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so final major brand, Ombro. Uh, you asked me my, yeah. about my favorite Ombro template. And I'm going to pick a range, actually. I'm going to pick the tailored by Ombro range, especially the early years, because it, it lasted for a while. But the, the early years, the first two years, uh, tailored by Umbro, I think it's my favorite range of shirts ever, ever. I have, I have so many. This is why I'm wearing Ireland. It's much warmer. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have well, Rangers, England, Peru, um, City, uh, Ireland. I have so many, so many tailored by Umbro shirts. And I think that they're just all gorgeous. All gorgeous. Yes, yes. It's... I could not agree more. I think they are. I mean, Umbro had 
Umbro had a phase just before that where I think they lost the plot. True. Where, I mean, what they pulled out for England or Sweden, I, although this was my first Sweden shirt, I did not like this with the diamonds here and they, uh, it, it just didn't look right. I actually enjoyed the England and Sweden shirt for 2006 because it had this cross yeah, in a cross, way. Look, yeah, it looked really nice. That made some sense. Um, but yeah, I think a tailor by armor because again, so customized uh, in a way and, so and, and, and looks uh, so classy in many ways. Although I think with the England shirt, they went almost a step too far uh, because it, I, I was not used to the time in England is an all white look that looked to me almost too clean. <laughs> yeah, but it, I mean, it would have worked with simple navy shorts. So I think it's, I mean, in terms of, I understand. Yeah. No, no, I understand. For me, for me, honestly, because England is like, England is, is, is on bro. For me, yes. it should have gone even further and they should have put the umbro in white on white. It, yeah. would, it would have yep. looked just, it would have been my yep. boy. Uh, Although, the funny thing is that, and I wasn't really aware that much of the shirt, that many people, that I had a red one, was blocked, they said that the best English shirt was the one released a year after, because it had the St. George's crosses in oh, yeah. all different colors, which I'm not 100% if I would agree with that, but it's definitely an interesting shirt. <laughs> no, no, because the color was different, and I like I yeah, just liked uh -huh. the, the the polo look of the very first yeah. one. Yeah, and yeah. The yeah. blue didn't work as well as the red for me. Mm -hmm. The English yeah. flag is, is is white and red, and for me it was just yes. uh, if if I had to pick, for instance, oh, 2010 is my ultimate shirt, and I think it is just France 2014, England 2010. They are, for me, they're there, okay? But apart from this yeah. England shirt, the other tailored by Umbro shirt that England had, the 2012 was really nice. The 2000, 2012 shirt with the red color um, and yeah. the red It looked, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looked better yeah, yeah. than the 2011 version. I actually, I actually like the, even the black one with the light blue one, I, I like quite some. Yeah, exactly. that uh, because it looked it looked different. Um, but that that, 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 that was the that was the strength of tailored by Umbro, the tailored by Umbro range. Exactly. Yeah. Any look that would have looked weird looks really nice. Yeah. And yes. Yes. Uh, big love for the 2012 Sweden jerseys, both of them. I have to give. Oh, the I I call them the IKEA shirts because when you go to IKEA, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they wear. Them. <laughs> The employees wear that. <laughs> no, but uh, I, the dark one is to me. I mean, it's a it's a jersey that will get you your ass kicked in Buenos Aires. But this is such a gorgeous shirt, the navy blue with the uh, yellow yeah, sash. The sash uh, it, it looks really nice. Yeah, because it's Boca Juniors and not with, one. With, with river plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's the, uh, the, the ultimate mashup. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Although I actually saw, I saw a few days ago that uh, Boca had such a such a shirt as a centenary jersey, which I cannot quite believe. <laughs> I think it, it sounds familiar, but yeah, um, there was something like that. But I, I, I definitely when I saw the shirt, the first thing I saw it's Boca colors with river templates. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't really, you don't want to do that. <laughs> And that's also, and that's another shirt that I don't see anymore. This was, uh, that was the window at Euro 2012. Yes. I remember even my wife saying, she was, uh, because we were watching together Ukraine against Sweden at that point. Uh, and she was saying, this shirt looks awesome. This would look so good on you. Yeah. Even and I'm, and I'm, yeah, I should buy it. But again, <laughs> it was yeah. not quite in, and now I I would love to I, I want to have a, a blue Sweden Sweden jersey, uh, that one would be the ultimate for, for for me. Although I have to say that the current one is nice. Although I think I like the one from the eighteen World Cup a bit better for some reason. I cannot pin it down why, but there's something about it that I like with the colors. You you mean the navy shirt? 
Uh, I think the one in 2018 was a little bit more blue with yellow accent. It had this kind of checkerboard pattern like uh, Belgium had. I should I should check that because I can't remember this one. But I I, yeah. I, I actually I actually have the, this year's navy shirts, you know, with the pin uh, the pin yeah. stripes mm -hmm. in yellow. Looks uh, very nice. If if you are ever going to buy this one, know that it fits really loose. Uh, I bought a yeah. large and it fits mm -hmm. like an extra large. I don't know why, but okay that. Uh, That's that, good to know. Yeah, just, just but I but but I've real I've realized that for Adidas that uh, large in Adidas fits me most of the time uh, comfortably as well. Whereas an X large fits almost a bit too wide for the replicas. Yeah. Um, it's very it's very interesting because uh, that doesn't work for any other brand that way. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. It's true. But yeah, I, I noticed that I, I almost regretted buying a large and I was like, I should have got a medium. A, a, a bit the same thing as for the Umbro shirts from South America. Recently on MN Direct, you know, for Christmas and everything, I bought the Santos. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Santos. Uh, mm -hmm. Which one again? Gremio. Gremio. And, and, and another one. I ordered the first one in large. I ordered one in a separate order, the first one in large. And I was like, man, it's so wide. And I, the same thing happened on plastic football shirts when I bought the Jamaica Umbro shirt for a large. Mm -hmm. I, I, I put it on. And, I was, and I, so I, I took my tape, my, my, uh, my measuring tape, and I, I checked. And actually, the measurements are of a large are for an extra large in another brand. So if you want a large in that South American Umbro range, buy a medium because actually the the from pit to pit it's actually it, they actually yeah. put the they actually chose to to the medium actually is a large in terms of uh, yeah. measurements in centimeters very interesting so I, I bought the it's almost one. it's almost us size because in the us that was yes. large exactly <laughs> exactly and it's only for south america it's it's really weird if you buy an Umbro in Europe, just yeah. buy buy your size, but but go a size mm -hmm. down if you if you buy Brazilian Umbro shirts, um, because uh, yeah, because, yeah well, as 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 you know, I'm as you know, I'm still holding off on buying clubs outside yeah. of Europe for now, because otherwise yeah. I'm opening a rabbit hole. That I mean, as much as I would love to have, I mean, I Boca and Flamengo are two teams that I actually do like, and a little bit Sao Paulo. But yeah, I I have to make a limit. I yeah. I actually made it in such a way that I think last year I sat down and I said I wanna pin down my collection a little bit more to be um to not go all over the place because I want it I wanna have at least a little bit of a structure to it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I, I totally understand. I mean my collection covers a whole range of shirts, but I, I I, I'll be honest, I bought them because they were 20 euros. <laughs> I mean, uh, for, for more than that, I wouldn't have bought them. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, so, we agree on Umbro. Exactly. Now, do you want to... Move I on think to... there's only one brand left. Yeah. Yeah, no, Kappa. go on. Kappa. That's the one that comes to mind because this was the most prominent other brand, I think. I didn't think about Kappa. You should have or talked. another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to throw you a curveball. <laughs> uh, you, you, your picture is. Frozen. But you know, Kappa recently. Yeah, I know. Sometimes it. But do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do hear you. It's just if you show something on the camera, it, it will not be really. At the moment, I'm not showing anything, so okay. we're just talking. It will, it will move again. It will move again. Okay. You are also looking for uh, here, so it's <laughs> fine. Um, my problem, my problem with Kappa is that there's nothing more recent. I I stopped Kappa kind of somewhere in the mid 2000s. Um, I I I don't really agree because. Once again, there is a video that is scheduled on my channel. I bought the Genoa player version shirts from last season, uh, and they have changed. no. But I, 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 yeah, 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 yes. But for World Cup or Euro. Okay, national teams. Well, national teams, yes. Uh, they have a bit. They don't have 
any any national team anymore. Um, I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit lost, but no. Oh yeah, Gabon in Africa. Um, yes, you're true. In Africa, they have in Africa they had um, but I cannot now think of others. Um, but Gabon was definitely uh. Gabon, and I think that's it. Uh, well, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, honestly, my favorite Kappa template is 2002, uh, ever, because it's the mm -hmm. it's it's the for me. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I told this that for me, uh, it is 98 one with the floppy collar. I always loved that one. South Africa and Jamaica had that one. <laughs> True. Yeah, and one of the most iconic Manchester City shirts is actually the Kappa shirt from 97 to 99. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my, I my, think Call because there's really not much. Is it? Yeah, Kappa is a bad call. Like, uh, what brand were you thinking of other than that? Oh, I think I think we had stopped with the major brands, but for Kappa, yeah. uh, for Kappa, definitely 2002. Yeah, 2000, I loved yeah. that design. Okay. However, they 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 took that design again in 2009 and 10 to make other shirts. They, they took the same lines and everything. I I bought the Tor Torino shirts for 10 euros last week. Uh, mm -hmm. from 2009 and it's the exact same design as 2002-2003 yeah the only thing that looks weird is the this, the kind of band that you have at the bottom which makes it look like a plastic bag uh, if you buy it <laughs> but but and you, you have the European Roma shirt from 2002-2003 and the, that kind yeah. of weird uh, elastic band features at the bottom otherwise I think it's perfect too bad that it's yeah. so fragile though because for a collector it's really frustrating yeah. you can't really wear them but yeah honestly the look yeah. was just uh was just so classy uh i i can totally see italy at the 2002 world cup had just the ultimate italy shirt for me italy kit as well yeah I'm, I know we disagree there, but that's a different story. Yeah, just, we, <laughs> but, we only disagree on, on the color shade. Otherwise, we, we agree that yes. the look itself is really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the look itself is nice. I, I, the color was the one that I um, think should have been a little bit of deeper blue. But yeah, yeah let's, let's, <laughs> let's not go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what else did I... Rebranding. I, mean, I think we... We're done with, uh, yeah, exactly, rebranding. Re that, that was the one thing. So what I was thinking, um, I've seen a few times the national teams, and I want to now stay with national teams, have either changed a uh, logo or even the entire look. I mean, for me, most prominent is Austria, where when Hans Kranke became the coach, because Austria beat German in 78, and this was his big game uh, in red and white. He said Austria should play at home in red, white, red. And I'm still among them that I have to get used to this look. For me, it still doesn't look quite right. Uh, and uh, the other reason was, which I think has been debunked now, that red shirts make you win more often, which is complete BS because the statistics don't bear it out. Uh, the analysis is based on English teams. And yeah, uh, who is winning in England? It is, Ar it is Manchester United, it's Liverpool, it's Arsenal, but this has nothing to do with the shirt color. Yeah. Uh, because if you go in any, in any other league, it doesn't bear out this way. Because otherwise, I mean, uh, Germany probably. But other than that, there is nothing behind it. So it's a complete BS. But um, that was the reasoning for Austria switching uh, from white and black, which actually should have been originally, uh, it was the Habsburg colors. They originally played in yellow and black. Because the Habsburg really? colors were yellow and black. Yes, this was the original uh and then uh, seemingly it washed out and suddenly it became white and black. Because Germany plays in white and black because these are the Prussian colors. Yeah. Uh, so um, it is. it always is weird. And I think uh, it was another move that we don't want to look like the Germans. Although there was always the, the, the differentiating feature, although it has been watered down, is that were the socks. German socks were white. Austrian socks were always black with an Austrian flag around. That was the differentiating feature. 
So yeah, so but they, but this is my first uh, example for a rebrand. I mean, they are the ones where we say the, we already said the Netherlands and uh, France was a little bit more subtle, but where the crest went old style. But you know already that I think what Germany did in 2014, I really think this is a look that Germany should have adopted going forward because it looks so sleek and clean. Uh, because for me, the old German look, there is a certain image attached to it that does not fit my image of the modern Germany team. But my question was, uh, which other team do you think would be in need or should think about a rebrand? Well, national teams. Yeah, I, I thought at first I was like, I can't find another one. And then it popped. I think Belgium should have a rebranding. Uh, okay. Because Belgium have been the butt of the joke, uh, had were the butt of the joke of the jokes in the early two thousands, and before that they had kind of a not a really pleasant style. When they were on top, you know, eighties, nineties, when they were a good team, their football style was not that pleasant. Now mm -hmm. they're back. They're the best strength team in the world. They have an appealing uh, style of football. They have been great for years, and I think that they should stop messing up with their looks, and they should really go back to what they had in the 80s, so uh, red, black, and I think it was red bottom uh, or white, I yeah. uh, but I, I, I can't really remember, uh, but should go back to that, stop the whole red kit, and what they try to stop having yep. funky kits because you know the, the one with the brushing effects is just uh, disgusting. Mm -hmm. And what they try to do with the, the their new crest that was released in 2020, I think they missed the spot completely. Uh, it looks nothing like I actually don't find it that yeah, but I think it doesn't look that bad. I think it looks much better than, for instance, what Austria did. Yeah, but there's at least a there's at least a touch of class. I mean, it looks like the the say that it is an Italian coffee logo. Yeah, uh, exactly. But it's it's not football, and I it's what what, yeah. I, what I'm talking about is that it's it's a nice crest for a, for a federation football association, but not for yeah, the uh -huh. national team. You know, there is yeah. this distinction in France. There is the logo for the for the for the the, the national mm -hmm. team logo for the football association. Same in Italy, and. In my opinion, they should go back a bit like the Netherlands to the lion that they had in the 70s, um, which yes, so, yes. So for yeah. me, they should go back to something like red with hints of yellow, black with hints of yellow, with the lion and the socks red with, as you mm -hmm. said, perhaps the Belgian flag. And with that, because they are the team who actually were were. Uh, raised from their ashes in 2014 and yes. in my opinion they should adopt the look that they had in the 70s when they were one of the best nations in the world and early 80s mm -hmm. it was that yes. look, that very look and with a lion would would look it would look perfect but for that i mean first of all you, you have to get rid of adidas because honestly it's not yeah. I, I, i'm i think of all the national teams that are manufactured by Adidas, Belgium is the one that fits the less, the least. Sorry, um, it's uh, they are for me. They're not Hence, their pleasing, yep. pleasing style. They they are just not. I, I've always associated Adidas with with strictness and um, not fun. You know, I I, I can't really find mm -hmm. the perfect word, but something that is really. And yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, I see German, where you're you know, going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think a Belgian would deserve a nice shirt made by Nike. And, uh, and they had Nike uh, until 2009. And today I think Nike would, yeah, exactly. Something, something really pure and cool looking like that. Um, and mm -hmm. even today, what Nike does with France, I'm pretty sure that if they took the and with uh, the Netherlands, because you don't like the stripes on the flanks, but I mean the shirt looks really looks yeah. looks quite cool, uh, and they 
they are at the origin at the at, at the origin of the rebranding of the logo with Netherlands and France. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. they should do they Nike is the perfect manufacturer for that. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I I would really love, even though I liked the shirt, not the kit, but the shirt. Uh, at the 2018 World Cup. I know you don't like it, but I yes. like it mm -hmm. because it, it, it brings... No, no, I do not. I, uh, I do like it. The one thing I do not like is, I think I even have it here. Let me just... Uh, I do like it. The, the only thing that I find a little bit odd is that the red vanishes. Okay. That is something that I think they missed a little bit. If you make an outline somehow that it kind of uh, uh -huh. preserves that because the it looks like uh random yellow diamonds thrown at the front if you look at it true, from a distance true, true, true. Yeah. there is or if you switch at least the red and the black because the black is just here in the center and then as an afterthought here on the sides this is what that's the one thing that i think could have been done better other than that, i totally love this shirt yeah i think there's think... a reason why i got it yeah of, of course <laughs> But uh, I, I think it's the only nice kit, uh, the, the only nice Belgium Adidas kit. 2016, and I told you that we would go back to 2016. The kit had yeah. the, the right colors. No, no, this was horrible. But what kind of yellow was that? Yeah. I mean, and it, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. the shirt was just terrible. The away shirt was nice uh, because it reminded of the cycling mm -hmm. shirts, and they are one of the biggest yes. cycling nation in the world. So it looked really nice. It looked like a world champion, uh, cha uh, cycling uh, cycling world champion shirt. But otherwise, the, yep. the home shirt was terrible. Do you remember the shirt that they produced for Belgium when they arrived on, this, on the shirt in, two, in 2015? Yes. The, I so did not understand why they put... It so was just, I mean... Why white? I never under understood. I mean, make it at least a uh, uh, red with yellow. Yeah. The white, I did not understand at all. I mean, it was a last minute switch in a way. So I think it was kind of rushing to get a temple, but I found this so disappointing to, uh, it, it, it just was horrible. Yeah, I, I, I know that it was last minute thing, but when you know the Adidas My Team platform where anyone in the world can, yeah. can, can make its own shirt and you, you have it within a month, honestly, I think it's a it's yeah. a bit of a fake argument to say that it was a last minute change. So that they didn't want to do anything right, and for me it was a shame because Belgium is is, is a big nation of football, and yes, they would have deserved at least. I mean that template was so easy to change. They would have deserved yellow instead of white, and it was disrespectful. In uh, and then on the thing here. And on the thing here, I mean, I never liked this part that they had on, on this, but make it yellow and black, and then yeah. you have. Yeah, it, I mean, it's 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 such an easy combination, and uh, and even yeah. I could do it on on the Adidas my team. And in two thousand sixteen, yeah. they had that fluorescent yellow. Uh, yeah. It was just. I terrible. did not like that shirt one bit. I did not like that shirt one bit. It was hard. And also because there was the black here, maybe all right. And, uh, all the roles of it somehow it, it, it didn't look right to me and as you're and, and you're right the yellow was horrible and, yeah. and so but the one thing i have to say um uh no do you hear do you hear me the one thing i have had to say with belgium and adidas the first world cup that i watched was in 1990 where belgium was still with adidas and so for me, my first memory was Belgium with Adidas. And they, I, I remember they had like France, they had the um, black stripe in the center here going, which was really nice. I think they had um, a red shirt, they had yellow stripes, and there was one was black. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you had kind of, you had a Belgian flag in there. So that was one thing. And the other thing, I agree with you with the red and black that looks better, but I always was intrigued by the thought that Belgium does a France look, red, yellow, black, that you have to flag. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I think it would look weird, you know. It might be a little bit too bold, but it, it might be a little bit too African in almost but a way. They, they had in, in, uh, in 2006, when they didn't qualify for anything, they had red, black, and yellow 
on on the socks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looked it looked quite it looked quite okay. But once again, I mean, we're back to Nike. I think Nike should be should be back on 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 a Belgian kit. But the truth is that I I don't know. I mean, they did produce nice uh, shorts. For instance, the in 2018 the away kit, the yellow shirt with black shorts, and they had yellow and red yeah. stripes on this on the side. If you take the home yes. shirt mm -hmm. and put instead of putting darker red here. You put black, yellow, yep. uh, mm -hmm. um, black, yellow, black, and it can fit yep. with mm -hmm. the black shawls, and it and it's and it's perfect. It's a perfect look. But yeah, Adidas, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I really think Adidas, Adidas have missed the the sport with Belgium, every shirt and Euro 2020. The the, the Belgium shirt is just terrible. The one that they are still using, yep. I I hate it to the bone. I mean, what kind of thing is mm -hmm. that? It's, it's like, we want to be creative, but we don't know what to do. Okay. Um, and it's... I, I, I heard that this should be a B on the front. The stroke should be a B on the front. <laughs> a lower... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I bet your, your daughter drew better B, Bs when she was just one year old. You know? We'll get to Chris in a second. <laughs> Yeah, so honestly, uh, yeah, I think if one national team uh, should need a rebranding, it would be Belgium. And I told you that I had an example and a half. The other one would, ne would definitely be Italy, especially as they didn't qualify for the World Cup. Uh, so it, it makes perfect mm -hmm. sense today. Um, I think Adidas should go back to, but first of all, I, Italy had that unique rule that was amazing that the national team didn't have the right to have the uh, manufacturer yes. logo and it was a nice rule. Fortunately, I don't think it's, it's possible mm -hmm. anymore, but at least if Adidas wanted to make no. a, a great Adidas kit, put blue on blue first, if you, if, if you put your, yes. your logo. Mm -hmm. And as you said, I hope, they won't, but I would hope for Adidas to come up with a blue, white, blue, a little Italy flag on the yep. collar and nothing more. And mm -hmm. I would love that. Yes. But they're not going to come up with anything uh, remotely close, I think. No, uh, I'm I'm less confident in Adidas delivering a good kit than I was that uh, Italy would qualify. And that says a lot because I, <laughs> I, I was never, I was not confident that Italy will qual qual qualify and I was right. But I, I trust Adidas even less. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I'm, I'm in the same situation, honestly. But I, I mean, we know that they're going to be the future manufacturer for a while, I assume. So, yeah. uh, at least yeah. I, I, I hope that they're going to come up with something classy. Yeah. But otherwise, it's I have something. Running. Yeah. A little bit. Um, and it's more down to uh, the reality of uh, the kids that they're playing in and that they're never ever able to play their home kit, especially the Euros, Croatia. The red and white kit, I have, I went today through all the matches. I uh, went on the website at the World Cup, they could wear their home kit in 65% uh, of the matches at the Euros in 29%, for a total of 48% of the matches they can wear their home kit because the red and white clashes with every single nation that has a red home kit and then a white away kit. I and agree. what I'm so and what I'm saying is Croatia should adopt a look like this full time. Yeah, yeah. That, that I, because it is it is a real trouble for Croatia. The look is iconic. It is uh, one of the most uh, unique designs out there, whether you like it or not. But to me, this is a better looking jersey. I mean, not particularly this design, but the blue where the checkerboard pattern shows up is a much better look. It's uh, pleasing and it can be worn against almost any opponent. Yeah. That um, is red. I, I'll tell you something which I, I thought about today. My very first uh, striking recollection, recollection of Croatia playing football was not 1998 because I was really a child, so I was focusing on yeah. France, and I didn't 
pay attention to the semi-final, but I took my most striking example, and I told you on my messages, of the Euro 20, um, 2008, 2008, was Croatia with Modric and so and the blue sh the blue shirt with the checker here and this is the best version of that design and they wore it in every single match at that euros exactly it should become their their home shirt uh, indeed and yeah. you know that um, i thought about that you know what, um, because i while looking at the the latest uh, bayer leverkusen shirts what i like with bayer is that from one year to the other, they, the, the home colors switch. Like one year it's black, one year it's red, one year it's stripes. And yeah. funnily enough, it doesn't ruin their identity. Uh, it's, it's, it's strange, but it yeah. does not ruin their identity. And perhaps Croatia should do that. There are teams that have uh, switched and taken their uh, uh, away colors as home, co as home colors same for slovenia it, it always goes back it, it, it often goes back and forth you know white green a bit of blue it, it always depends on the on, on the on the trend uh, the green the green is uh, the green is out the green is out because uh that was actually uh, I, I don't know if you know the story about slovenia plays along in green that's uh i think um which team is is not it's not Olympia. Uh, is it Olympia Ljubljana? One of those teams, the, um, the, the federation president who was a fan of the biggest team of Slovenia. I think it's Olympia Ljubljana. They play in green and white and he chose those are the colors for Slovenia because it's that club's colors. Oh. And then they did, uh, and I think in 2012 or 2014, I think in 2012, that's when they did then the rebrand and said, because there were many Slovenian fans that were not happy with that because they don't want to support that one team <laughs> because Slovenia should be different. I mean, and, and I mean, they have this very iconic uh, mountain motif, which they also have in the flag. I don't like the crest that they're using, but that's a different story. Um, but that's a very unique motif. And then they said, OK, we are not going for blue, white with a little bit green uh, thrown in. Uh, which makes the jersey much more palatable now to the general fans to detach it from the club game. Oh, it's, it's, I didn't know the story really. Uh, I should make a video out of it in French. That would be nice. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, uh, not, not really nice to know. So yeah, but okay. But not, but you see my point uh, here. Uh, with yeah, the, the, the totally. Yeah. Switch. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure of what I'm going to say, but hasn't uh, the Czech Republic done that too uh which which one is the i'm home not color? the traditional home color for the checker Republic is another one where i want them to change back is red white blue then they went to red blue blue now okay but, but i would like but the shirt is red home, the home shirt is, is red it's red but they've been very frequently wearing uh white but the traditional home shirt for the checks is always red Okay, and it's a bit like Russia, you know, uh, at some point they had red, some point they had white, some point they had burgundy. Uh, and so uh, uh, yeah. they wore them so f frequently that you, you, you don't even know which one, wh which is which, you know, uh, the home shirt you wear. Now for, uh, for Russia, I, for Russia, I, I, I guess you know the exact point was in 2008 where they, because um, because they tried to stay away, they wanted to have a Russian flag kit for after the when, when they became an independent nation. Then in 2008, they had the home shirt was actually the white one, and the red one that they wore more often was the red one. But the red one became so popular with even within Russia that they said, okay, let's go back to the Soviet look, and we're all red again. That they sometimes switch, switched into burgundy. This was, I think, an Adidas branding that went completely yeah. wrong. Because that was the one that was intended for the 2010 World Cup. Let's give Russia a completely new image. And then they don't qualify because <laughs> Slovenia beat them. <laughs> uh, and, and then they have tried, I think, twice. And every time Russia was a complete disappointment. I think in 2014 and 2016. Yes. Yes. In 2016, so, they even caused a riot in Marseille with the English fans. So, yes, yes. Uh, I mean that jersey to me is the it looks to me a wallpaper like, like a wallpaper in a red light establishment, if you yeah. ask me. It's true, but if they had qualified for the 2010 World Cup, objectively speaking, burgundy and gold 
looked really nice, especially the tech yes. version. But it yeah, was yeah. associated with, uh, well, not qualifying to the World Cup. So, yeah, yeah. yeah bad move. So it was, and, it was and say, again, say, bad move for Adidas picking Italy now. <laughs> yeah. Too bad. <laughs> well, Italy have only. Italy have only themselves to blame. That's the yeah, one true. thing that I, I mean, I was, yes, I, yeah, I mean, if you have to make the penalties and yesterday when North Macedonia, I mean, I told my wife in the 30th minute, I told her Italy is going to mess this one up yeah, because I, I saw I, I exactly how the game is going. Yeah. And then I went, they scored. I had just this nervous left. I was almost happy about it because I said, yeah, this is exactly what I want, but what deserve because you're absolute idiots. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't watch the game, but I watched the highlights and I saw the goal that they missed yeah. and the, the, the goal was yeah. wide open. And uh, yeah. Yeah. honestly, you can't, it's it's so brutal, you know, like they won the, they didn't win the Euros in 2020, you know, they won it last June and last July. And so but I think, I want to go get back to Croatia, but I want to say, I think actually this is the problem. Because after tournament win, there's usually this slump. I remember vividly France in 98. In 99, France were kind of stumbling into it and then to qualify for it for the years. But they had this entire year to catch up. But Italy went from World Cup qualifying, where they were great. They peaked at the Euros. And then they had half a year, but after this, the whole post tournament uh, tension was kind of falling off. And there you missed the World Cup. You didn't have a chance to make this up anymore. True. I think this was actually, uh, I I actually have a, 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 a may, I may make a video about this because I really think that this has a big effect. If you won, you had the ultimate high. And then staying focused for this, uh, for the, and you had also the Nations League final four in between. So there were so True. many distractions. Really staying focused on the whole thing was absolutely hard. I actually think that uh, Italy will come back and qualify easily for the Euros, of course. I mean, qualifying for, for, for the Euros is not a problem. Yeah. But yeah, I think this was, uh, this did not help that the tournament was moved by a year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that's, that's football, you know. And you're right, in, in 1999, France qualified for the Euros at the very last minute because Russia and Ukraine tied, uh, which was exactly. quite unexpected. And then poof, France moved up to the to the first spot, and in the playoffs, neither neither um, I think it's did Ukraine or Russia go to the playoffs? I can't remember, but they didn't. Play. I think they, it was you. I think it was Ukraine, and they played against Germany. Yeah, as far as they, I remember. yeah, they didn't make it to the to the finals, and Germany yeah. well, Germany lost too, but that's, that's something else. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they they and after that they won the tournament, but. That's just yeah. how football is. See France at the Euros, uh, the same thing happened. Um, yeah. yeah. But that, yeah. That's exactly. Another, yeah. But back to Croatia. But going back, back very, uh, the one thing why I also want to see this because I don't want to see this necessarily as an old blue kid. I want to see because I miss Yugoslavia. Blue, white, red. Oh. And it would also go with the Croatian flag very nicely. Yeah, but, but that is a, it could be an old blue kit. I like the checkerboards, but I think, um, I know they will not go for Yugoslavia, but probably should be an old blue kit, to be fair. But I was thinking the other day, I miss Yugoslavia kits. Uh, it, uh, the, I, the last time, and it made such an impression on me. I mean, I didn't see the game live, but when they played a 2006 World Cup, they only wore their traditional colors, blue, white, red, like France against the Ivory Coast in the last group game, which didn't matter any, anymore. But this was such a striking image for me that I really miss this look. <laughs> yeah, it really looks like France, though it is Navy. Uh, but if, if Croatia yeah. was to, to change their shirt, I would love to have a checker somewhere. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, no, it has to be, has to be. Absolutely, it has to be checkered somewhere. It has to be, especially, uh, it ha I, I was in blue, I would go on on other sides, but blue with somewhere the checkerboard come to come up. Nothing of this ugly black uh, navy yeah. shit that they had from 2018 onwards. It needs to be this blue. Yeah, yeah. This I, one I, even has the this one has in the checkerboard pattern as a inlay. So 
Yeah, it's, I see, but I meant, I, meant, I, meant, I meant a bit of red yeah, and yeah. white. Yeah. And yeah, this one, yeah. If you take the away shirt that they had in 2016, for instance, it was nice, but it, it really lacked that uh, white, and, white and red touch. 100%. 100%. For me, it's always the, I think the one that I like best is the 2008 one. I yeah. have a soft spot also for the 2012 one where it's the strikeout. Uh, it, it looks a bit too much for, to my liking it looks a bit too too much like the that puma template that they uh with the yeah yeah the cut here mm -hmm. but i have a soft spot for the croatia i have the croatia home shirt from 2008 um but yeah. uh they 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 barely worry but it's a player issue too i have a green slovenia from that era player issue too but I would love, I, I would love to to grab um, the Croatia away player issue shirt from 2008, but it's much more expensive. Yes, I actually wanna have a proper Croatia hotel checkerboard shirt, uh, but they're also they're never easy to come back. The last two I didn't like because the checkerboard was too wide. Yeah. The 2016 would be the one that I would really really love. But yes, it's really nice. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So yeah. But the last thing I the last thing I can make now, Croatia, I can't because you asked me soccer ball or bad shirt on the crest. And I wanna make I wanna make a point because there is a soccer ball on the Croatia crest, but that one is acceptable to me. It's the old style. Okay. What I don't like is and African teams. I mean the Egypt crest is a, a, a total mess this style of soccer ball. Because this is just taken from a computer graphic. This soccer ball was only used in 1970 and 74. If it used at least a tango style that was from 78 to 98, that looks a bit, but this is so uh, pointless. And cheap. for me, it's it anyway, really why it looks cheap. And then in addition, uh, why do I need to put a ball on there? Every big nation does not have a soccer ball on their crest. True. They have a national symbol there. And this is why I'm so annoyed by that. And then especially if they put this one on there. I mean, Hungary looks, I, I put Hungary, that looks, I mean, they have the crest and then here on the Federation logo, they have also this old style ball, yes. which kind of, I'm fine with the old style because you know that they, they chose a little bit tra uh, tradition, but taking this clip art and then putting it on the crest is just for me something that I just cannot. I mean, <laughs> what is this? No. Camera. I mean, it's not necessary. The star gets completely lost there. I mean, make a, a proper Cameroon flag. True, true, true. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's and it's written figure foot, so we know it's football. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, That's the point. And I mean, I've uh, uh, railed enough about the Austria uh, new crest, which is absolutely horrendous. And even their interpretation is such a crap because there's only in fighting. It shows the unity of the Bundes, there are 10 feathers. Yeah. It shows the unity of the nine local federations plus the Bundesliga, which they're constantly bickering and fighting. <laughs> and then they have under the eagle, they hold the soccer ball, the same clipboard soccer ball, and the eagle looks like a spider. My daughter can draw a better eagle. So I'm I'm so and then on when they release it on the black shirt, the eagle is on a white background, which draws so much of your fo uh, visual focus to that crest away from the admittedly nice pattern. Um, a total mess. A total mess. <laughs> I, got I mean, there was another, there's another, the Bulgaria. Oh, yeah. yeah. I hated this one. I hated this one with a vengeance. And I always said in 98, Bulgaria had uh, the proper Bulgarian yes, coat of arms. And then they made the, the rebrand. And this was the last shirt where they had this um, Federation logo. It's pointless. It looks horrible. Yeah. But this one is gorgeous. True, this is yeah. absolutely gorgeous. And uh, make, I mean, I love this shirt even with this one because of the flag trim. That's, there are many things that are going right with this shirt. Yeah, it's really nice. But this is, a, this is an absolute proper rebrand. Re re and 
former for Bulgaria has been outstanding. True, true. So, I bought I bought the the current uh, white Bulgaria shirt and classic blue yes. with the, the the stripe here and yes. just the lion here. It looks it looks gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. What, and what, you know, what do you think I, of, of this soccer ball? Um, there is there is a bit of, of, of you work. mean you you mean this one? This one is cool. It's the same crest. It's the same crest. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, they really they stole it. And, and, is, and Israel has the very same crest too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I think I'm all right with it, and I think for the Ireland shirt, I actually like that there's a clover somewhere in there, so there's a little bit more. Uh, um, it's maybe a little bit too much modern, uh, but I actually don't, I don't, I don't hate it. it uh, there is at least a little bit of creativity in there. True. So I actually think the Macedonia shirt, I'm also fine. I'm also fine with, um, it's not ideal, but I'm okay with it. What I really hate is this clip art 1970s yeah. soccer ball, because it just makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing when I look at a L shirt and they put a hockey stick or a puck on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the uh, when I look at San Jose Sharks, it would look great without the hockey sticks. The shark doesn't need to bite the hockey stick. Yeah, it's a, it, it was the we had the discussion with my friend, you know, it, with our floorball team, the uni, our uni yep. hockey team. Uh, because we changed our logo recently, so we have mm -hmm. some something like that, you know, which re, which is really nice. Yeah. It represents a leopard. Uh, our old mm -hmm. uh, written logo for our documents was this one, and there there was a bull, but we, we wanted it to be a bit design yeah. designish, not something from clip art. And we had that. Uh, I don't have anything here, but mm -hmm. the CF logo with a a, a small bull. Bit yep. underneath but something that seemed to be moving yep. so a bit of design here but the yep. ultimate thing that we didn't want was a logo with two sticks uh behind behind the yep. logo because especially in france all the teams feel the need to put uh, uni hockey sticks uh, in their logo and i'm like it just looks horrible stop that uh it's it, it's it's pointless why do you need to put this uh I don't yes. know. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. so basic. That, if, 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 if we, it's the same for me with the soccer. But I mean, uh, the cross sticks, if there's a skull in, in between, maybe then I could live with it. But other than that, it's a no go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it just looks, yeah. Like, and and I'm, I, I, you can totally picture the guy who is thinking about the sticks. He's like, we have to, yeah. put, we have to put sticks on the logo. It's going to be so original, yeah. so nice. And it's mm -hmm. going to remind yeah. us of hockey, but without reminding it. I'm like, yeah, everyone, everyone does that. I mean, you know that what sport you're playing for, yeah. for crying out loud. <laughs> it is so, no, uh, this is something that uh, whenever I see a crest with such a ball, uh, I, I just, uh, it, it gives me the creeps. Maybe the only one where I almost am okay is Ghana. Because the style is a little bit different, the style of the logo, yeah. but still, this could be much better. This could be much better. And put a black star here, put yeah. a circle with a black star and have the flag, and that would be a proper Ghana logo. And yeah, I should go to Africa and design logos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, before that, they, they should actually, actually I, I was thinking about that. I think the African Confederation should have a program like UEFA, you know, with uh, now area yep. and Macron before, because kids in, yes. in Africa are just a mess, and the federations are so poor that they don't have proper kids. And yeah, uh, I think that that is something that they should have. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that there is a brand out there that would love to do that. Absolutely, I think uh, that that will definitely help to have such a program and uh, make. Because, you know, um, most African kids try to be appealing, but some go too far and then you see really cheap kids, as you say, out there and uh, they could use a little bit. I think a, a brand like Macron would jump on this 
immediately and they would, and they would complete probably... a perfect a perfect job uh, that's uh yeah i'm pretty sure that what they did with the small european nations was amazing um and yeah. i'm pretty sure they would do something something as great with the freaking nation i'm pretty sure that what they did with comoros yeah. was just unbelievable yeah. yes no it was a it, it, this was a great shirt uh, for Comoros, absolutely. I I cannot agree more. So I I would love to see them uh, do a sound something like that. Although I mean I have some hope that in Africa they are finally going to get it a little bit together. I see already they have this very unified branding for not only the Afcon but also for the qualifying tour to tournaments. I think they are moving uh, a little bit forward because uh, they see that people like Africa, the, the look of Africa in many ways. Yes, true. But there is so much work to put in again, uh, left because we saw it at the AFCON, like the kids for uh, which yeah. nation was it again? Malawi? No. Which, which changed kids at, the, at half time. Sudan. 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 And they had the, the, the font on the, on the names, like there was yeah. caps lock and then uh, small, small letters. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it was just, uh, it was just terrible. But yeah, now uh, this is something it shouldn't. So much potential. It shouldn't happen. So much potential. Yeah, absolutely, ab ab absolutely there. I also think that um, Asian kids, uh, especially uh, Arabic nations, could use yeah a little bit more work because uh, that is when I looked uh, when when I think about the Asian nations, um, especially the Arabic ones, they all look rather bland. I mean. The UAE had an outstanding kit. I think the last set of Saudi Arabia kits was really nice, but typically they are not exciting at all. They are no. all some Yako template thrown at you. True, yeah. And Iran is the same with Iran. They've always had weird yeah. local brands. They were great in 2006 with the Puma kits, in 2014 with the Hulsport kit. Yeah, Hulsport. But, but otherwise, otherwise they, they would really, really need... Uh, um, strong manufacturer to do to do that kind of thing uh, because yep. even if you take the romai kit for senegal they look nice but romai couldn't deliver much more uh, they were the no. they were jamaica's manufacturer too and they after two years they quit yeah. and um, yeah yeah um, well for iran the problem is are the sanctions on iran they cannot really go outside oh yeah that's okay. that's the problem at the moment with iran so this has to be mentioned uh, I actually, their current kit is not that bad looking overall, yes. but I think it's impossible to get. That's what I was going to, <laughs> to say. Yeah, it's going to be a hard one to get. And that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. Another, that's another strength of, of, of Macron's, is that in terms of distribution, they're pretty good. Their website is good, yep. and they have actually mm -hmm. a lot of stock all the time. Uh, yes, and when 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 they drop that stock on on sports buys, it, it's even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I just I ju I just want to say the one thing that I don't like about Macron, their shirts never go on sale. <laughs> yeah, it's when true. Yeah, the it, they're quite they, expensive. Yeah, they never go on sale. Yeah, exactly. that's the only thing that I, that I don't like with them. So yeah, so it's true, it. and it, that's the reason why <laughs> that's the reason why I went for the Andorra home shirt on eBay. Three weeks before it was released on Sports Bar for twenty yeah. euros, but it, even on eBay it was yeah. cheaper. It was cheap, brand new with tags. It was cheaper than on the on the the, the, the official website. And you know, recently, yeah, Macron did something really, really uh, sneaky, really, really cheap because they released advertising on social media like it's Black Friday, thirty percent off in march late march and so you click on the link and there is no discount uh -huh. at all uh it's just that they are still popping up all yeah. advertising just to 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 take you to their website i think it's really really unfair and not uh not good at all that's nah, their, absolutely that's their only flaw yeah that's their only flaw the only thing is i mean i signed up for macron for their newsletter i got a 10 euro coupon that's when i bought the non shirt that i have okay <laughs> yeah 10 euros, fair enough. And because, because I liked it, I mean, I know it was never worn, worn in it, but I I liked that one a lot. And I said, okay, um, yeah, I have to spend more, but this is a beautiful shirt, so I want to get it. Lovely. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous, and that's the only thing, but you can subscribe to newsletter once, you know, and uh, 
when you want, I wanted that Luxembourg shirt, but I wouldn't have spent 70 on it. Um, yeah. And they, they did a great job. Well, well, I have a trick up my sleeve. I have four or five different email addresses. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice Because one. I didn't know. I did that for Adidas. I signed up there and then I saw that the, uh, because I wanted to see what code will I get. And I saw that the code expires uh, way too soon. So I know exactly when I have an Adidas shirt or a Puma, and Puma does it the same way. I now am informed by the one email uh, address, but the other ones are ready to fire uh, to get me the discount. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, uh, it's a, yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, anyway, I have uh, two work emails. I have uh, two private emails. One is associated with the YouTube channel. Then we have a family email address. And if need be, I'm still in control of the email addresses for my two daughters because I want to give them eventually to them. Okay. But so I made them for them. But <laughs> they I still will, have full when, they, when they turn like 14, they will have their first email address yeah. full of. Football spam. <laughs> Football codes, yes. <laughs> so uh, that's my trick. Uh, if you want, so I know now. The, I, I know this now. So if it ever gets to that, that that's how I will do it. So yeah. All right. I will have. I to just want to look at the. I just want to look at the time. I think we are reaching eight thirty ish. Yeah. Our target We're going time. To have to go have dinner. Yeah. And watch football. Uh, it was really yes, nice. Exactly. We, should, we should do it some time in the next month. Uh, yes, this time we were a little bit more on target with uh, nice discussions. I... Yeah, we did nice. Yeah, we, we did we did really nice, uh, and mm -hmm. we managed to log in at the right time. No problem. The connection was fine. Well, pretty much. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah, it was really really cool. Yes. So I totally enjoyed that and we'll surely continue some other time. Yeah. I have to, I want to schedule with other people as well, but we definitely will continue some sure. chatting. And yeah, now that really I, cool. I hope now that the video will work, the video will also work really nice so that I don't have to do some, so much editing. I hope no, that with the video, I, I, I just can chop here, chop there and uh, upload and then that's exactly. the, I think the that's, ideal. I think that's, uh, that's the perfect way to do it. Yes. All right, oh, well. I'm, I'm pretty sure like only one or two people will watch the video uh, entirely. Uh, they will have to leave a comment. I think no, there are actually there are actually quite a few in there. But uh, whoever does so, please leave a comment below. This would yeah. be absolutely interesting to see uh, who watches the whole thing. I I think the one editing thing I will have to do is I will have to put again chapter notes in there because yes. that you can find your. Way yes, but, the video, we, but yeah. we discussed in quite an organized way, so it won't be too hard. Exactly. To do, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No, no. I think much better. We will keep that up. <laughs> we will find nice topics next time as well. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. We, we have our plan. That's nice. Exactly. Okay. I'll keep in contact with you anyway. So I uh, will chat otherwise. On the on a private messages, but I hope that everyone enjoyed this little chat with uh, between the two of us. Yes. And yeah, I wish you a nice evening. And let's see. I think games are kicking off in Africa, and I'm all for it. You will watch France against the Cote d'Ivoire. Yes, definitely. Uh, I'd rather watch my country. Uh, that's uh, that's yes. even even when I no can. I cannot watch friendlies any anymore. I have decided I, I need to watch competitive stuff. Otherwise, the, even you know, if it's you know, you I'm... know what my my read my secret dream, but it's not secret anymore. But I want I I still watch friendlies because I want to see Giroud score. Uh... <laughs> yeah, <yeah. laughs> I love oh, he's scoring for the right team a lot. So. <laughs> yeah, I I love the guy. I love Benzema too. Like in France, most people think that if you are if you love Giroud, you can't love Benzema and vice versa. Uh, yeah. I mean, you have to be stupid not to love both football players because they are just great yeah, yeah. in their own style. Benzema is obviously a better football player, but mm. I love Giroud. I love, you know, the, the state of mind. He's just uh, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah. I, I hope, just for you, I hope, he, and for him, I hope Milan is champion because he's... he's performing really well and uh and roma yes. can't expect anything anymore so so no uh, no 
No, yeah. Europe are uh, the conference league, the conference league for Roma. That is my, this is my dream. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> But otherwise, yep. yes, uh, I hope Giroud takes Milan back to the champion spot. And I hope someday he can beat Thierry Henry's record. But it's going to be a tough yes. one. We'll see that. Well, we'll end it on this note. That yes. sounds a very happy ending. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enjoy the games and chat, chat with you soon. Yes, bye. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.